Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. We have a new high impact fusion rifle that was introduced into the game with Season of Dawn, the Gallant Charge. This is a solar high impact fusion rifle, and there's a lot to talk about today, like how good it is in PvE, how it compares to the loaded question there, how good it is in PvP, is it better than air until? And when talking about PvP, when we get to that section, there's a lot to learn about fusion rifles there. But in this review, I'm gonna go through the perks, its application, how it performs in games, and more. It has a very special and unique perk pool, and I don't take account, so I grinded all these out. It took over 10 hours, many bad rolls, but I got some really good ones to showcase and highlight. I spent a lot of time with them, and I feel I can give this fusion a solid review. You obtain it from the EDZ obelisk. Once it's open, make sure it's your linked obelisk. That way, this is your option after you complete the sundial to choose the weapons, and at rank 5, you can grab a bounty for it as well. There's a couple ways to farm it. That's key. It is farmable. Weapons like this set themselves apart because of that. As you start ranking all of them up, and the more that you get to rank 11 in the obelisk, you get an extra drop. So that means you get three or four of these fusion rifles to start looking for those perks while you're farming. With it being solar, it completes the energy trio. Air and for Void, Wise and Rebuke for Arc, and now the Gallant Charge for Solar when it comes to random rolls. Now, we also got the Alatha that's also solar with the Season as well, but out of the gate utility, very good for solar shields. It goes without saying, it does really well with solar engagement. It's good for blockers and gambit and so on. The intrinsic high impact frame states it's more accurate when stationary and aiming down sights. For the base stats, it has a range of 53, stability of 31, handling of 27, reload of 24, an aim assist stat of 61, recoil direction of 76, and a zoom factor of 1.5 times. On the bones of the weapon, the core, there are a couple things to take note. Number one, it has barrels, not scopes. It has a set scope that it uses, it's fairly open, it's clean, but aside from adding rangefinder, you can't up that zoom multiplier. And number two, base stat wise, it has the second lowest range, stability handling, and aim assist stat. It ties for the slowest reload. Basically, the stats are below average. Some are the worst, but it has a very interesting perk pool. And again, it has barrels, the same ones that you would see on, let's say, a hand cannon, chamber compensator, full bore, polygonal, small bore, fluted. For a fusion rifle, stability is a big factor, and in the PvP section, I'll go over that in depth, but range is very important as well. For the batteries, liquid coils, accelerated projection fuse for range, particle repeater for stability, enhanced battery for a larger magazine, and a couple more. But getting into the first perk node, we have Demolitionist. It's top tier for this fusion rifle, because there are only four in the game that have Demolitionist. The Wizened, Epicurean, and that reintroduced the Latha, and this one. Being a high impact, it has a very heavy, heavy shot, heavy damage with seven projectiles. So for a fusion like this, you can delete an area of adds, and each one counts towards Demolitionist, granting your grenade energy, and once you have it, you throw the grenade, it refills the magazine from reserves. Importantly, on this fusion, it's in the first perk column, the first perk node, not in the second. That means you can pair it with some amazing perks. We have auto loading holster, great perk for PVE and PVP. When stowed, it automatically reloads it. Loaded question has this, and for fusions, it's a great perk. We have Grave Robber, melee kills, reload the magazine. Very good pairing with a second node option. Hip fire grip, I personally put this on the low end of desired perks. And then no distractions. Aiming this weapon for a brief period reduces flinch. It's very odd for a fusion, especially in a high impact frame. The Alatha has no distractions as well. It does have a place, and it can be used a couple different ways. I'll get into that later. The second perk node, Swashbuckler. First high impact frame to have it. They switch up the damage dealing perks not too long ago. As you get kills, it goes up to a times five stack. Now that times 5 stack is roughly the same as Rampage times 3, so 33% more damage. Once you're at that times 5 stack, you can keep going. The timer's a tad longer than Rampage, and that helps because of the longer charge time for this fusion rifle. You can also melee an enemy to immediately jump to a times 5 stack and go from there. It's a top tier perk. Next, we have a new perk, Lead from Gold. Picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo for this weapon. From what I hear, it's a very solid PvE option, because you have to think you're getting more chances on a brick drop. Modifiers that grant more heavy ammo come into play, and it seems like a really solid one. And if you've used this perk in PvE, tell us about it. It seems really good. But in PvP, it doesn't seem to proc there. I tried it with various different heavy weapons, and it wouldn't give me ammo for this fusion. We have multi-kill clip. Awesome. Flat out awesome on a high impact frame. This is the first time we've seen it on a fusion rifle. And remember, multi-kill clip is the best damage dealing perk in the entire game, legendary-wise, because you can chain it, get a kill, reload, get a kill, reload, keep going on at least a times one stack. But if you get three kills within the magazine and then reload, you get a times three stack. So with the high impact fusion, it shreds through ads. It's so good. One burst can get three kills easily. You then do your reload and then start going to town. You could be next to a major. You can throw on a major spec. Get three ads, they're all lined up. One shot them with one burst, reload, and spend at least three shots with multi-kill clip times three on the major. It's very, very good and a top tier perk for it for PvE. Simply because one burst can net you the three kills and then you get the reload for massive damage. Rangefinder, increase effective range and zoom magnification. Normally, I would be all over this. It's good, but when you start 
start to take into account that it has a set scope, the other perks in the other node, and how those perks can go together, Rangefinder is actually low on my list, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. We have Tap the Trigger, it's an excellent PvP perk, probably the best PvP perk, and again, I'll go over that in the PvP section. And then finally, Rampage. I didn't get a roll with it, but we can go back to that multi-kill clip footage. A 33% bonus at a times 3 stack that you can keep going and chain off of. Just constantly keep the times 3 up. And it works on these high impacts because the shots are so heavy, and you can wipe through multiple enemies at once with one burst and instantly get that times 3 stack. So let's get into the god rolls, rolls to be looking out for. There are a number of them, and you have a full season to try to acquire one. Is there a best roll? Now there is going to be for you, because it depends on how you want to run it. You have to do different things with each perk, and each perk combination has various ways to enhance this fusion rifle. First off, Demolitionist, and in my opinion, with anything in the second node, because it's in the first column. It's special. You pair it with a damage dealing perk like Swashbuckler, Multi-Kill Clip, even Tap the Trigger. For PvE especially, and for PvP, it's really good there as well. I have a max range roll that's Demolitionist and Swashbuckler, so full bore for the most range that it can give. Range Mashed Work, and then Projection Fuse. It has an 85 stack. I also have the damage dealing perk, and I can keep that at a times 5 stack, 33% more damage. I can then throw the grenade to bypass the reload, and then all the kills with this fusion are getting more grenade energy. It's very good. And the max range has better damage fall off. Next we have Demolitionist Multi-Kill Clip. And it might be even better, because I talked about earlier and you saw what it can do with ad clear. So you have to think, big group of enemies, you throw the fusion shot, each single ad is going to be giving you grenade energy, and once you get three, you do the reload for multi-kill clip times three. It's beautiful. You get a lot out of this perk combo with these two together. You get your grenade faster, you do massive damage, the best damage you could possibly do with any type of perk roll for this fusion, it's a top tier combo. Next, auto-loading holster with demolitionist, and I like this one a lot, I actually got this roll. And to take a look into the playstyle with it, what I do is when I see an enemy with low health, I bring out the fusion rifle and I melee them. I get swashbuckler times 5, I then go on a terror until the stack's gone. The swashbuckler stack's fairly long, so I try to use it on more challenging enemies and when I feel it's about to run out, I hit an ad real quick. And when swashbuckler times 5 goes away, I stow it. It reloads in the background, and the one that I have has ionized battery to give me 7 total rounds, 7 total shots, and when I see another low health enemy, I bring out the fusion, melee them, and then go to town again. We have grave robber swashbuckler. That's possibly even better and one of the better roles with these two combined specifically because Grave Robber with anything else, not so much. You can melee and then refresh the magazine. So you can go on your times 5 stack rampage and then when ads are rushing you, you just melee them, it refreshes the mag, it keeps times 5. Really, really good perk combo. And also remember, Swashbuckler, a melee, so something like a Hunter Throwing Knife can proc the times 5, so you can use that to your advantage. Moving down the list, no distractions with Tap the Trigger for a PvP centered roll. I have two rolls with this combination and it works fairly well and in the PvP section, again, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but first in PvE, it's more so centered around damage dealing perks, highlighted by Demolitionist in the first node. Both Multi-Kill Clip and Swashbuckler are golden, under that is going to be Rampage. Its direct competition is Loaded Question, highlighted by the Reservoir Burst and Auto-Loading Holster. It's always been extremely good for ad clear, and the explosion damage does more than the actual projectile bolt. When you have Reservoir Burst, it does 33% more damage. You can hit an ad, and the area of effect is going to clear the area, and if Majors are around, it does even more damage to them. And with Loaded Question, you can just shoot one shot for an ad clear, stow it, have auto-loading working in the background, and bring it out again to do the same thing later on. On the other hand, if you can get the damage dealing perks going with this fusion, it's top tier, and it's just as good for ad clear. And looking at Loaded Question, I mean, as far as pure damage, if you have a 7 round magazine and hit a major, the first shot's going to be that Reservoir Burst shot, and then the 6 after that are just going to be base damage. The total damage is 85,260 on a major, but if you were to have something like Multi-Kill Clip, the first 3 bursts are going to be with Multi-Kill Clip, and then the final 4 are going to be base damage. The total damage is 98,840, and that's not counting a major spec on it or anything like that, so you do get more damage. So it really depends on what fits for you. We talked about the demo Swashbuckler, Auto-Loading Holster Swashbuckler, Buckler. Say you want to try to get sweeping kills on ads that are grouped up and then reload for that massive multi-kill clip times three. Or maybe you can melee an enemy for swashbuckler times five and go from there. There really isn't a better one because you have to do different things. And it's all situation dependent. Something like the sundial, both the swashbuckler and the multi-kill clip roll can work. On really high-end activities, it might be hard to melee an enemy. So you have to keep all that in your mind. I do want to get a demolitionist multi-kill clip roll. 
So is it better than Loaded Question? They do different things, first off. One's Solar, one's Arc, so it is encounter dependent. This one's more about damage dealing with grenade regeneration. It's great for ad clear. And Loaded Question is more so about a massive burst doing great damage with Dragonfly area of effect. And that's special in its own right. And it depends on you, the player, because with Loaded Question, it can be more of a pop and go type deal. You see some ads, bring out the fusion, clear the area, go back to your primary. Whereas with the Gallant Charge, you can just straight mow down an area and keep it out and use it as a primary. On the Crucible, and here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to walk through something that you need to know. These high impacts are deadly in the Crucible, and Erentil comes to mind. Players on Reddit and on Twitter saying, look at the range this thing killed me from, the range, the range. A lot of players use Erentil, and some of you are wondering if the Gallant Charge can compete with Erentil. While this fusion is viable, Erentil is still the king. Erentil is better for PvP regardless. Take all the base stats, throw them out of the window. Take the recoil direction, you throw it out of the window. Take PC, mouse, and keyboard versus controller. Again, doesn't matter. And as far as PC goes, mouse and keyboard has better recoil, meaning better stability, meaning better grouping. So with these distances, PC is going to have a tad bit more range. Take this as an overall game mechanic. Take this as a statistical approach. No bias, just straight facts. The Gallant Charge has barrels. It doesn't have scopes. While sure, you can add on something like Chambered Compensator and a Counterbalance mod to make the recoil direction near perfect, it doesn't take away that it has barrels and not a scope. And the other side is that the Gallant Charge only has one stability perk tap the trigger. And what that's doing is making the accuracy cone tight when it comes out, which is a good thing. So if you were to take this roll that has max range, the 85 range that we talked about, that's like 20 to 30% of this roll. It's not really that important having that big range stat, because you need to understand that you can have all the range in the world, 100 range even, with range finder. But it means absolutely nothing if you can't get the burst out straight and tight and on your target. At 37 meters right here, I did all the things that you're supposed to do. Be stationary for the crouch, controlled it, tried to level it out, various things. It won't down. Sometimes you're going to get some longer ones, but most of the time you're not. Because the range that you have on here is the effective damage number at a distance. While yes, it will be better, higher numbers, but it isn't landing. In comparison, why Aaron Till still takes that top spot is because it has firmly planted. Under pressure, tap the triggers, options, stability perks. And these are very different than the actual stability stat. And all those times people say the range, the range of these things, it's not actually the range. It's the stability that you can roll with Arantil with those perks. On the stat bar, it has 20 or so less range than this Gallant Charge, but the frame itself wants you to be stationary. Tap the trigger starts off the burst tight. Firmly planted is on a whole nother level on what it does to stability and recoil direction. So even though the bolt numbers are lower at a distance, the burst is actually lower. Landing. So overall, the solution here, and keep in mind this is no bias, a stat approach, the high impact fusion is exacerbated by firmly planted under pressure and tap the trigger. That's why these are so good and consistent. When you compare it to this one, consistency is the key word. When you look at these background clips, this is PC, mouse and keyboard, the Aaron Till has under pressure tap the trigger. So at the end of the magazine, it gets more stable, tap the trigger starts off the burst tight. When you see the Wizen Rebuke, it's firmly planted with Tap the Trigger, and I'm sure you see the projectile spread. This spread, regardless of the range stat, is what matters. It's the consistency. These are longer shots, just to show, but most of the time they're not this long. Imagine the enemy's 15 meters closer than it is right here. So with this one, it could have a super high range stat. It could have a 100 recoil direction. It could even have good kind of average stability. It will never outperform as far as consistency as another fusion rifle that has under pressure or firmly planted with Tap the Trigger. It never will. So so just know that those perks are the key to the carnage. So when you spec out this particular fusion rifle, it's not going to be as consistent as Arantil or Wizen. It's not going to hit further, longer, or more frequent. This just has tap the trigger. So at the start, for consistency, this is the best perk for the second node. In the first node, Demolitionist is great, and on any other role for that matter. If you get Demolitionist, it's great for PvP. So you can pair tap the trigger with no distractions, but be really careful with no distractions, because it takes about two seconds for it to proc after you aim down sights. When we use high impacts, we mostly charge from the hip, keep up our radar, and once we see our enemy, when it's time that the burst is going to come out, we aim down sights, get the shot off. So it's kind of weird to get no distractions going, but there are a couple scenarios where it works really, really well. It's reducing flinch, so when you know that you're being rushed, you can aim down sights pre-aim, have it active, and it's going to be there. But the second thing, what it's actually better at, is going to be your second enemy. You're in an area, you know enemies are coming, you're aiming down sights, the perk's not going to be up, you charge the fusion, get the kill, but for that second opponent, it's going to be there. That's where you're really going to notice no distractions. But if you're just sitting there laning without something like knucklehead radar, you know, 20 to 30 meters is very easy for 
for someone to come down with a shotgun. There's a real possibility you're not even going to see them on your radar. So for the Crucible, Demolitionist and tap the trigger, no distractions and tap the trigger. And since we went through what we went through as far as stability, just know that this thing's not going to be as consistent as an Aaron Till and the others. The other option is to go for the damage dealing perks. The multi-kill clip roll, chain so you can get a kill, reload, get a kill. The projectiles do at that point with multi-kill clip times 1, 55 and above. Or you can do something like Swashbuckler and you can use a throwing knife or something to get a melee, get the times 5 stat going and it does 60 plus per bolt. Though it's infrequent on how often you can do that, they still can do well. And a lot of times the damage comes up when you make a play and you need it most. So for the Crucible, I'm not saying that it's bad at all. I am saying that it is viable. I had a nice we ran out of medals with the Demolitionist Swashbuckler roll, and I got Swashbuckler going. But at times, there were shots that flat out missed. If I had tapped the trigger, or under pressure, or definitely firmly planted, I would have downed them. So just kind of know what you're getting yourself into. The stability perks are key on high impact fusions. That's why Aaron Till stays at the top. It's got the longer zoom multiplier because of an actual scope. The frame really helps out with stability, firmly planted, and so on. I didn't talk about the batteries and barrels, but all the barrels apply. Yes, polygonal for stability is nice. Chamber is nice for the recoil direction, but just know it's only going to help you out a teeny tiny bit. These have an RNG spread, and there's no perks on the fusion itself to help group that RNG tighter, aside from tap the trigger. The same goes for full bore. Again, you can have all the range in the world, but it's not going to mean anything if you can't land the bolts on something that's even 18 to 20 meters away. When you're shooting this thing, you have to finesse the shots, especially if you've been using something like a firmly planted air until. Now for the batteries, higher batteries that give six or seven rounds are key for a PVE roll. For PVP, accelerated and liquid truly have an equal weight because both do separate things really, really well. The bolt damage goes from 48 to 47, but you get a faster charge time with accelerated coils. You lose seven total damage on a full burst, and Liquid Coils is a heavier shot, doing 7 more damage than the original burst. It goes from 48 to 49 per bolt. I like Liquid Coils on mine, I don't have any issues with it. It means that the shots that fall off are going to be higher damage numbers, and it really comes into play versus something like Supers. You don't know what masterworks they have on their armor, so take the scenario. I do have on Liquid Coils. I land 30 per bolt 4 times, that's 120 damage. The knife lands for 85, so 205 total damage, it downs him. But on this fusion, I don't have on Liquid Coils, it's just the base. I don't know what his masterwork armor is. I kind of get away. I throw the double knife on the wall as a trap, it runs into it, but I land 24 per bolt right here. So in this first clip, if I landed 24 per bolt times 4, and then landed the body shot throwing knife, that's 181 damage, the warlock would have lived. So I take my chances with liquid coils, again, it's going to be up to you. More damage is more damage. Yeah, it's a little bit longer, but that's the give and take that you're playing with. For the mod, appropriate for PvE, major minor boss. For PvP, counterbalance to pair with a recoil altering barrel. And then targeting adjuster otherwise, maybe even Icarus if you're a top tree warlock. In conclusion, this is a solid fusion rifle highlighted by damage dealing perks. If you don't see yourself using those damage dealing perks, then something like loaded questions, pop and go type playstyle is going to be better for you. But if you slay through groups, get the damage dealing perks going, it's a very high ceiling and it really is a force in PvE content. And to mention again, Demolitionist being in that first mode makes all of it better. In PvP, Tap the Trigger is the only stability altering perk. You can do well with it, and the best way to describe it is that it feels like a normal high impact fusion. Aaron Till is king because of the way it can group its burst pattern. This fusion doesn't have those perks. You can have good games with them, just know your range. It's not Aaron Till range. You're gonna get a couple deep ones every now and again, but just know even at medium range, the burst might not fully land, and you're gonna have to follow up. And that's regardless if you're using mouse and keyboard on PC or on console. And if you think it's going to be as consistent as a decked out Aaron Till, you're going to be disappointed. Even when you have this thing at full force, it's not even going to be on its level as far as consistency. So use the perks that you want to their fullest potential. Demo, Swatch, MKC, it could be really good. As the season goes on, you're going to be upgrading the obelisks, meaning that you're going to be able to get three or four drops per sundial run. So you can just pick four of these fusions, look at the rolls. It's a very good farm and a very good weapon. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. What do you think of Gallon Charge? What roles do you have? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.